Happening now, New York State is launching a new hotline to report COVID-19 vaccination abuse. Details next. Plus, Congressman Tom Reed checking in with two local businesses and honoring one with a congressional recognition. Well, we've had a little bit of sleet and freezing rain this morning that has put down a little bit of ice accumulation. We'll see a little bit more this afternoon than frigid temperatures on the way. We'll talk about it next. The news at noon starts right now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. Chautauqua County officials reported two new deaths linked to COVID-19, along with 235 new cases of the virus from over the weekend. In an update to the COVID-19 dashboard yesterday, the deaths involved a 70-year-old and an 80-year-old. County officials also reported 235 new positive cases, bringing the active number to 423. This brings the overall positivity rate to 8.2%, that down from 9.2% on Friday. Cattaraugus County, meanwhile, reported 24 new cases of the virus yesterday. Well, New York State is launching a new hotline to report COVID-19 vaccination abuse or fraud. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced the news during a press briefing yesterday afternoon at the Roswell Park Cancer Institute in Buffalo. Cuomo says those with tips about fraudulent vaccine distribution should call. You have a high demand for the product. You will see scam artists uh, and you will see fraud. I guarantee it. We've already seen it. Uh, and there are a number of situations that we're looking at. If you get an offer that sounds too good to be true, 833-VAX-SCAM. Uh, the governor says that the increase of hospitalizations has throwed, slowed throughout the state along with the rate of transmission. Well, concerns are raising after the National Comedy Center moved to no longer allow the County Board of Elections to host a polling site at the Jamestown train station. As WNY News Now's Hope Winter reports, several council members voiced their disapproval of the nonprofit's move during last night's city council meeting. I, I think we should do something to try to maintain that polling site at the Comedy Center. It's it's handicapped accessible, it's, it's in a good location. Council member Vicki James and Marie Karuba also brought up concerns on how often the district's polling site has changed over the years and how that could lead to frustration on election day. Why that particular site has had so many changes, that's a concern to me that that seems to be the only one that's changed as often or as frequently as it has. The polling location for Jamestown Third Ward has been held in the former Gateway train station since 2013. The Comedy Center acquired the building in 2016 with the downtown Jamestown revitalization transferring ownership at no cost, in return keeping the rotunda open for public use. Not-for-profits are required to make space available in the state of New York as part of, of their not-for-profit status there to make room for poll sites. And the hammer is that you're supposed to lose your not-for-profit status. The election commissioner did not want to speak for the NCC as to why they will no longer rent the site for the Board of Elections, which in the past has paid $100 per day to use it. Green says at this time his office refrains from reporting the organization to the New York State Attorney General's office. However, it is an option. The polling site was previously at the nearby ICE Arena. However, in 2013, it was moved to the train station because of increased accessibility. Some of the council members argue that the train station portion should remain open to the public. The renovations on it was, was many millions of dollars. And some of those millions of dollars that were put into that uh, restoration project of the train station was taxpayer money. From what I understand, as Ms. Karuba said, that that rotunda was supposed to be open to the public and have access to the public. And it seems like slowly over a period of time that that area has been uh, taken away from the public. In the next few weeks, council members and the Board of Elections will meet to discuss where the new site should be set up. Hope, thank you. WNY News Now has reached out to the National Comedy Center for their comment, but hasn't heard back from them yet. We'll update our reporting at WNYNewsNow.com once we do. I see Honest Johns and uh, Rand Manufacturing here. That's uh, 
uh, some of our best um, to survive COVID-19 and thrive during COVID-19 tells me, uh, you know, this is what we do in Western New York. Congressman Tom Reed checked in with two local businesses during a visit from Washington on Monday, honoring one of them for their expansion during the pandemic. Reed visited with Honest John's Pizzeria in West Ellicott and ran Precision Machining in Falconer. John Raymond, owner of Honest John's, was presented with a congressional proclamation for opening his new location during the pandemic, in turn hiring of dozens of workers in the process. Raymond says he's honored to receive it and have the opportunity to speak with the congressman one on one. I feel comfortable that we have a man like that representing us that we can talk to. It really means a lot. It almost felt like I was talking to my next door neighbor. While in Falconer, Reed and his staff toured operations of Rand Precision Machining, one of the many local businesses that received money from the Federal Paycheck Protection Program. The company's president and CEO, Kirk Grimm, says the funding went to improve safety measures to keep employees safe. Grimm also says the congressman's visit is good for employee morale, giving them a chance to hear directly from the representative rather than just seeing them on the news. It's that human element that, you know, and it's not just them because they'll go home, they'll speak to their families. You know, there's that ripple effect, They'll, and their families will speak to their friends and whatnot. So it's just a very calming influence right now, right? Yeah. That, that it's, uh, you know, we're kind of in this together right now. So I think that's an excellent thing that he did. He says his company, who contracts for the U.S. military, has been fortunate to see a sales increase during the pandemic, in turn offering stable employment for their workers. Well, we thank you for joining us for WNY News Now as we get a check of uh, local news that matters to you. And we want to hear from you. Let us know what you think about it in the comments down below. Good to see Rick. Good to see Kathy, Diane, Raymond, Sandy, and Joe as well. Well, now let's switch gears and get a check of our first defense weather forecast. Busy weather day out there, Dakota, as a lot of people are battling a little bit of ice as uh, they head into work this morning. Yes, we did. We had a little bit of that icing, uh, that glazing accumulation, which is what we told you about yesterday, would be coming our way last night. This is a live look over Chautauqua Institution, and uh, there's actually a little bit of rain falling here, but the temperature here is actually above freezing, so there's actually going to be a little bit of uh, rain and snow mixing. But our own Sean Sweatman uh, captured this, the ice accumulation on some of the uh, street signs here. And again, that looks like about a tenth of an inch worth of ice. And again, that's enough for a glazing, and that is why when you you walked outside this morning, your your driveway and uh, even the sidewalk was a little bit slick, uh, uh, you know, especially out there this morning in the side roads as well. Radar shows you where you see these pink and purple areas. That's the rain and snow mix along with the sleet and freezing rain. A lot of that has actually moved off to the northeast and actually is now fighting the colder air. It is now changing over to some snow showers and we still have a little bit of rain and snow showers to go through through the afternoon, but uh, temperature is actually hovering right around freezing for most areas today and this is the key here. What Temperatures hovering around freezing. It's not going to take much for the rain and the snow to fall to actually uh, freeze on contact with the surface. 35 was the uh, high yesterday. We started the day at 30 degrees. Temperatures really haven't budged much so far today. So snow, rain, sleet, freezing rain, basically just a mixed bag of just everything. It spreads north. Uh, it spreads uh, south to north uh, through the afternoon. Slick spots, lots of clouds, 32 to 35, and it remains breezy. But temperatures really go downhill by the end of the week. We're talking teens. For highs, we'll time it out in a few, Justin. All right, Dakota, we'll certainly have to bundle up for that. Thank you. Well, the president of St. Bonaventure University continues to battle the effects of COVID-19. Dr. Dennis DePiro has been hospitalized in Syracuse since December 29th. He tested positive on Christmas Eve. The university says Dr. DePiro is in serious but stable condition and currently now on a ventilator. The university says Provost Dr. Joseph Zimmer is taking over as acting president so Dr. DePiro can focus completely on his health. Well, while Governor Andrew Cuomo has a proposal to legalize mobile sports betting here in New York State, a group of lawmakers now voicing their own legislation to do so. New York State Capital Correspondent Karina Campabianca explains the key differences between the two 
and in the end, where the money will end up. Under the governor's plan outlined in his budget, the state would run mobile sports betting as it does with the state lottery, and revenues would be directed towards education funding. I'm with the people, and I believe the people of the state should get the revenues. Meanwhile, legislation co-sponsored by Democrat and Republican lawmakers throughout the state would allow casinos to make the profit and pay a portion of that back in taxes to the state. Assemblyman Angelo Santa Barbara says he believes the legislature's plan is the best way to support local economies. The way the legislature's proposal would, would go is that each of the casinos would, would be able to team up with two providers for online sports betting and they would collect the revenues and the state would receive payments based on how much revenue is generated. Under the governor's proposal, the state's gaming commission would request proposals from providers to support the infrastructure for mobile sports betting and select one or more entities. Santa Barbara says if the state goes with one, that could lead to a monopoly. Stephen Aquario with the New York State Association of Counties says while the governor's proposal needs to be unpacked, the organization prefers the legislature's plan right now. It's a very big business type enterprise and uh, hopefully at the end of the day the local governments and the off-track betting corporations could provide that existing infrastructure to supplement the casino infrastructure and the state system. It doesn't make any sense to rebuild a whole new system when we have something right in place right now. Governor Cuomo says mobile sports betting could generate 500 million dollars in revenues. In Albany, Karina Capabianca. Karina, thank you. The bill has already passed through the assembly and will now continue discussions. Well, next here, a lot more to tell you about President Joe Biden seeking a deal between Democrats and Republicans on the next COVID-19 relief package. But first, we hear from Jamestown Mayor Eddie Sunquist in his 2021 State of the City address, where the mayor dosing out a bit of reality. Stay with us as WNY News Now continues. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. Sorry about that. No, no, I've been staying at my dad's place because of everything. Oh, my God. He's good. Yeah, I know, we keep missing each other. I've been working out of my dad's house, doing some reading. I should be working out more. I just feel like I'm drowning. Navigating these times can be tough, but while you care for your loved one, you also need to care for yourself. Go to aarp.org caregiving for free mental health and self-help tips. Remember when you were a kid, huddled around the television, waiting for your school to close? Well, we don't get snow days. When winter weather hits, count on the First Defense Weather Team for a look into the future where the snow is headed next. Live radar showing you the scope of the storm. And real-time reports from the field. So when it matters most, stay with First Defense Weather. Catch your First Defense forecast daily on WNY News Now with coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. It's not just what we say, it's what we do. Local first, it isn't just our slogan. It's our mindset every single day. So whether you're watching our daily live streams or staying up to date with reports on our website and mobile app, you'll always see the same attention to detail from reporters who passionately care about our community who have one goal in mind, to always put the facts first. For me, it's more than just getting the forecast right. What I love the most about my job is that I come into work every day to help break down the weather, letting people know how this is going to impact their day. We take pride that First Defense Weather is the only local weather team in the Southern Tier. 
We don't just copy and paste our weather from outside sources. Every part of our forecast is handmade right here in house, something our team really takes pride in. What matters to you matters to us. Every story, every day. WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Local municipalities were on the front line of fighting COVID and we must get our fair share to fully recover. If not, the consequences will be dire. That's Jamestown Mayor Eddie Sunquist, who gave his 2021 State of the City address yesterday to residents virtually. The mayor discussing a lot of issues during the address, and he says since day one of his term, he's most focused on the city's financial difficulties that COVID-19 has only brought to the forefront. This past year has only made our financial situation more dire. We used to be one of the only municipalities across the state that was in a financial stranglehold. But given COVID, many municipalities across New York are now saddled with enormous deficits and even higher costs. While we work through issues locally, I will be working with state and federal government to secure additional funding to help the deficit that arose because of the pandemic and support to get us back on track. Sunquist says that the fiscal stress continues to dominate his conversations about the future of the city of Jamestown. He says it's crucial for city's council to find a way to raise revenue and decrease expenses as the city can no longer raise taxes. Additional troops with New York's National Guard have been deployed to the nation's capital. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced last night that following a request from the U.S. Secretary of the Army and U.S. National Guard, an additional 542 members of the Guard will be deployed to Washington, D.C. Now, according to Cuomo, the deployment is to help bolster capital security and will allow the previously deployed 1,300 Guard members to come home. 5,000 troops are expected to stay in D.C. through at least mid-March. Well, President Joe Biden is expected to announce an economic recovery plan during the next month's address to a joint session of Congress. No word on what the final price tag will be, but the president says it will be historic. As John Lawrence reports, Biden is hoping leaders in D.C. will pass a major relief package. The Biden administration is trying to boost a struggling U.S. economy battered by the COVID-19 pandemic. There are tens of millions of Americans who are really on the economic precipice. Uh, there are thousands of businesses, particularly restaurants, who are on the verge of going out of business. President Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief plan earmarks funds for things like stimulus checks, housing assistance, and increased unemployment benefits. I don't expect we'll know whether we have an agreement or to what extent the entire package will be able to pass or not pass until we get right down to the very end of this process. While some Democrats favor a pricier proposal, some Republicans want to tighten the purse strings, including Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, who says he's against another round of stimulus checks. Any further action should be smart and targeted, not just an imprecise deluge of borrowed money that would direct huge sums toward those who don't need it. As the talks go back and forth, the Biden administration is hoping for a bipartisan agreement. Democrats and Republicans can engage and give their input and feedback on what they think is going to work and how to move this package forward. I'm John Lawrence reporting. John, thank you. If both sides can't come to terms, Democrats may pursue a rare and controversial legislative process called reconciliation. That move would allow many parts of the bill to pass the Senate with a majority vote. Well, for the first time in nearly 40 years, you won't see any Budweiser ads during the upcoming Super Bowl. A commercial spot for the February 7th game is reported $5.6 billion. Budweiser says it's shifting that money it would have spent on the slot 
to support COVID-19 vaccine awareness with donations and future ad campaigns. Meanwhile, other, other brands like Bud Light and Michelob Ultra will air four minutes of ads during the big game. Well, we thank you for joining us for WNY News Now as we get a check of uh, some headlines that matter to you. Certainly a lot looking different with pro sports over the last years and uh, just now recently being able to have people uh, go to games here in New York State because of COVID-19 concerns. Let us know what you think about these stories and more in the comments down below. Great to see Deborah, good to see Sheila, Joe, Bunny, and Jessica as well. Hopefully you're all staying warm out there. Uh, because albeit today not as chilly as it uh, is expected to be Dakota coming up in the next couple of days. Um, however, winter is still here nevertheless. Yes, it is. And, you know, Mother Nature is reminding all of us that we're in winter. And, yeah, we've got some cold air on the way. Let's take a look at it here. And I wanted to start off with the winter weather headlines along with the impact level for some of that freezing rain. So through the day today, wintry mix, freezing rain is going to spread south to north through the day today. A light glazing on surfaces. We already had that this morning. So, uh, you know, when you walked out the door this morning, your driveway was probably a little bit slick, as was mine. And uh, the snow totals about one to three further to the north, one to two inches to the south. There's more mixing going on across the southern tier when you mix mix in more rain and sleet that holds down snowfall totals. So you can see across the southern tier, uh, we're going about two to three inches. There's a dark blue strip right here that includes uh, portions uh, basically of the uh, higher terrain. That is where you could see upwards of maybe two to three inches through tomorrow. Everybody else about an inch or less. That'll pretty much do it for much of the area. The higher totals further to the north near Buffalo. That is where you're getting into some of the more snow. There's been less rain there. The colder air is to the north. We're actually sandwiched in between the warmer air to the north and the colder air to the south. So uh, the future ice projections here. Yeah, this goes all the way until tomorrow. We could pick up an additional few hundredths of an inch. This will push totals likely to about a tenth of an inch and again that's relatively minor but it is enough to cause some slick spots out there so be careful as you're driving out there the uh, untreated roads and surfaces can get very slick winter weather advisory stays in place until seven o'clock tonight for uh the uh, basically all of western new york and five o'clock uh, today for uh the uh for uh, warren county pennsylvania the snow and rain is going to be ending there a little bit sooner so this is pretty much what's left of it now some of this actually is a little bit of snow but there actually is a little bit of uh, rain and sleet mixed in within this. You can see the radar switching back and forth between the snow and uh, the uh, frozen precipitation there, but this is all in association with the storm system, which is whoop going like this across the, the uh, northeast here. The actual center of the low is pretty much right in here, and it's going to be moving directly over us. So that is the reason why uh, we have the uh, storm impacting us today because of its close proximity. So here we go with future scan. Notice it picks up on the rain and snow uh, through the afternoon. That's going to continue through the afternoon today, and then it'll ultimately start to turn into snow showers as the colder air ultimately wins. So we're ultimately going to see a return to snow showers. This is where the snow could accumulate in the highest terrain, especially tonight. And then that tapers off for tomorrow. But it turns really cold here as we go into the end of the week. And we have a new graphic called the wind chill impact meter. So for today, yeah, you probably want to bundle up, even though temperature is not too bad. Wednesday, same story. But look at where it goes on Thursday over to this cold area. And this is exposed skin for 15 to 30 minutes. You could see some frostbite out there, especially as you go into Thursday and Friday. Air temperatures go down into the teens with wind chill numbers sub-zero possibly. Mm. Yeah, it's winter. So does those the zone forecast inland areas today right around the lower 30s next seven days brought to you by 42 degrees and sunny just leftovers early tomorrow 28 18 on Thursday cold and breezy just frigid on Friday a few snow showers 15 will start Saturday in the single digits cold all day 21 but we'll be back into the 30s by the second half of the weekend with more snow. We'll be right back. Don't go away. First Defense Weather is sponsored by 42 Degrees and Sunny, smoking deals on smoking accessories. Learn more at 42DegreesAndSunny.com. That's 42DegreesAndSunny.com. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. There's an old saying, there's no news in the newsroom. Well, 
It's true. The time I spend at the anchor desk is just part of my day. Most of our time is spent gathering stories in the community. Stories that matter to you. We can't do it alone and we need your help. When you see breaking news or have a news tip we should know about, drop us a line on Facebook today. Email our news desk or call our newsroom at 488-7226 so we can bring those stories straight back to you. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer. But 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at oneball4tc.com. Whether it's advice on managing your anxiety or tools to help you stay grounded, Coping 19 provides a range of resources and self-care tips to help you cope with this pandemic. We can help. Find the resources that work best for you at coping-19.org. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. And welcome back to WNY News Now. Finally here today, we've all heard that money can't buy happiness, but... Maybe that's not completely true. A new study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences found that one's well-being appears to grow with their paycheck. It previously was believed that well-being did not increase if you were making more than $75,000 a year, but that was based on people's evaluations of their lives after reflection. In the study, researchers looked at how people were feeling during various moments of their life. They used more than one million real-time reports from 33,000 U.S. adults and found that as income increased, so did your well-being. Interesting nevertheless. Financial security, a lot of people thinking about that these days. We thank you for sticking with us here as we get a check of uh, news that matters to you. And uh, let's get one final check of our weather if we can squeeze it in before we're done. Because I know, Dakota, over the next couple of days, it seems like we're going from near freezing to deep freezing. Yes, we are. We are going into the freezer once again. The 42 degrees and sunny seven day shows you temperatures going down into the upper teens for high temperatures Thursday and Friday. Both Friday morning and Saturday morning will likely start in the upper single digits. Yikes. Yikes indeed, Dakota. Thank you. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Of course, news continues 24-7 at WNYNewsNow.com and on our mobile app. We'll leave you with this live look over Lakewood. Careful out there on the highways and byways as things could be slick. Of course, uh, we're back tomorrow right here at noon with a look at headlines. See you then. <laughs>